Hey guys, Ryan here, and today I'm going to be bringing you two replays in the stockade. So, I thought I'd bring you a bit of a longer video today, and the reason is, these are actually my first two games in the stockade. So there's a load of them about, there has been for a while now, as everyone's been earning it. And I just thought to you, my first two games, I'll tell you what I think about the vehicle, a bit about it. So in this game, I'm platooned with Felix, he just captured King Tiger, we're top tier, and we are on Sand River. Um, so to begin with, obviously this is a Favaland, but not a loading gun, that's what it is. Got the APCR standard, the heat is premium, it's the same hull, um, with a cool skin, mind you. I do very much like the, uh, the paint job on this. But, I'm going to say, and start off with, I don't think this thing is OP. In fact, this is kind of an alright tank. Every time I play it, there are many other tier 8 I would rather play, and I think I'd have better games in. Um, but, you know, it does feel fairly simple to get not great games in this, but just consistent games damage-wise. I've been averaging about 25, 3,000 damage, and there's a 2,500, 3,000, which is not bad. You get three shots in all over 390 alpha, which is very powerful, especially, and I like, it might feel OP, especially when you're shooting a tier 6 tank, so you can just kill them in about 6 seconds. Um, and even against tier 10s, the clip potential of almost 1200 can be very powerful, but the thing about the Farber Land over at IS-3 is that obviously it's very slow. So this is slower than IS-3 and that can be an issue. Um, you're going to see here I aim for the weak point of the KV-5, I miss and hit his upper play, and then I'm going to hit the weak point. And it's actually going to bounce still, so... That was just a bit of RNG and luck on me, as well as the accuracy of this vehicle, which as with most Russian vehicles is horrible, 0.46 I believe. And it feels like that. Um, the actually is horrifying, the reload's quite long. Um, the tank itself is slow, which is what I was saying earlier. Um, you don't have very much armor in this, the top of your turret can be overmatched, and as we all know, the IS-3 armor. Especially against, you know, a lot of tier 7s and all equal tier and higher tier tanks, they can usually shoot through the pike nose. They don't even need to hit your lower plate to pan you, so... You, a bit you do obviously have really good side armor, you can reverse side scrape, you've got this space armor there that control people. Um, the turret can bounce if people miss the overmatch point. Uh, but overall, these games are going to see me meander around the battlefield, uh, trying to get as many reloads off as possible. That's the thing. If you push too aggressive in this vehicle by yourself, with no support, you're going to get caught out on the reload, and you're going to die. So, as long as you watch your reload, keep teammates near you, so that when you're reloading, the enemies can't just push you. You should be able to average some decent damage in this. Um, so I said, not any crazy damage games yet in this vehicle, just consistent 3k games. So, um, I'm going to go back to base now, because I'm a bit worried of us getting capped out, and there's a paladin over there ruining our team. Uh, Felix kills one paladin, but there's actually two of them platooned together, I believe, and the other one does finish them off. One thing I will say about the stockade is, I've been making decent silver in this vehicle. I hardly ever fire premium round, because, you know, once I've loaded the APCR, I don't want to reload a premium clip for 30 seconds. Um, doesn't carry much ammo, though. That's why I carry a lot of hate for those tier 10 games. Um, doesn't carry a lot of ammo. Uh... Although I said, I've not really found myself firing the heat too much, mainly because, as you're going to see in my first two games, I was actually top tier in both of them, which is really nice, so I've not fight too many tier times yet. So, this is the issue. I didn't want to come back to base, I wanted to keep fighting the other side of the map, but I don't want to get capped out in a vehicle this slow. You have to start making your way back to base early, because if you don't, you're going to be too slow, you're going to lose. See, I'm looking for that paladin, but quick spoiler alert, as I came back to our base to deal with the Paladin and defend our base, the Paladin went back to his base to do the same thing, to deal with my teammates over there to defend his base. So, I was hoping to run into the Paladin, but unfortunately I'm not going to. Now on the map, I can see the medium tank in front of me. And as I'm moving, it's going to be an enemy to the left. Tracks absorb it, and this is where the clip comes in handy. That is a full health, tier 7 medium tank. And that is now a dead full health tier 7 medium tank. So I don't know why he came back after reversing. He probably should have kept backing up. Maybe he thought I was out of ammo. I don't know. But 
You can feel, as I said, just the raw clip potential of this, if you can hit all your shots, that's another issue, as I said, the action on this vehicle is horrifying. Um, the view range is also bad, because it's a Russian heavy, so it only gets 350 standard, which is not great. I'm just driving up to try and get this medium to turn for me, uh, he seemed a bit slow to realise. I track him, so as he fires a shot, so it misses. Bit of small. And I'm not going to reload, because I know there's an STG near here somewhere. And I know it's a one shot, so I'm just going to hold the shot in. The hit points of my teammate over there isn't great. And our teammate managed to finish them off. So I'm on full health, now I can go for the reload. Um, and I've decided to leave this bit in because, as I said, this is one of the weaknesses of this vehicle. It's f quite slow. Um, not like, you know, super heavy slow, like, oh ho, vk 101 p but... When you played an IS-3, you can feel the difference in the speed when you've played the regular Tech 3 IS-3. Or if you play any of the other premium Russian tanks, like the Kirovets, for example. Now, I'm quite happy. Uh, I don't have the V-Range to outspot Paladin if he's at long range, but I'm quite happy to drive around because of my hit point advantage. The Paladin only has 230 alpha. He's got really good DPM, but only 230 alpha, so he's going to have to shoot me a lot of times to kill me. Um, so I'm kind of going center map here, just to try and give me the best chance of spotting him. Because uh, I don't know what side of the map he's on, it could be on the left hand side, it could be on the right hand side, I don't know. So by going center, I'm hoping that I'll either spot him, or, still, if he spots me, and then shoots at me, that's fine too, even if I don't see him, because I don't know where he's at. Now my team are on the left hand side of the map, which does help. See, I'm moving towards center again, just in case he's going down the middle of the map. On this game so far, you've not really, you've just seen the gun clipping people out. You're not really seeing too much of the armor working, because again, I'm top tier, and there was kind of low caliber guns shooting at me. But for the most part, just trust me, as I said, if anybody's played an ice 3 you know that, generally speaking, the hull armor isn't the greatest. People could shoot straight through your front, unless they're tier 6s. Well, most tier 6s. Some tier 6s can still shoot through your front. So at this point, I'm pretty confident he's either at the J2 line, on those sand dunes at the back, or he's at his base. And there he is. Now, I don't mind pushing forward, because even if he pans me, it's not an issue. I've got the hit points. And he's a one-shot for me. He's got the APCR loaded, which I don't really blame him for. Uh, full health stockade, and you're a one-shot, so... Um, go for it, even though he can pen me straight through the pike nose for standard rounds. Now, this guy's actually going to do something quite smart here. I know I can take a shot from him, so my plan is to just roll over the hill, face-hug him, and shoot him in his easy-to-hit cupola. But, what he's going to do is, he's going to push me as I'm coming up, and that's going to wedge my tank back and his tank up, and now I can't actually get the clean shot at his cupola. So, him pushing me there really works in his favour. So what I'm going to do is, I still have a repair kit, I'm going to move up at an angle to get round him, because knowing, even if he tracks me, I can insta-repair the tracks. Because he's a good player so far, so I have a, I'm confident he will try and track me if I come up here, so I'm just trying to bait the shot. Got my hand ready to repair the tracks, going up. He tracks me, I repair, and I'm out to get round, because obviously I don't have any gun to press, so I need to get to the flat ground. And I do manage to finish him off. So my first game was pretty casual one, top tier, I didn't get hit by Ardy or anything, which is super nice. Um, gun me a little bit against KV-5, 120k profit, 3500 damage, bit of assistance and 3 kills. Paladin on the enemy team, minus 4k, and loss, um, feels bad for him. But you see, none of my ops actually gave me any silver, that's just 120k raw silver earned there, which is nice. So, I mean, this tank's been making pretty decent silver for me. So it's a free tank for people, um, especially people who may not have too many premium tanks, it's actually a really good tank, because of what I said earlier, it doesn't feel particularly OP, and it makes good silver. And there are so many Russian tanks that, you know, having a crew trainer for the Russians is always nice. Um, now, hopefully lower tier vehicles give you more crew training, but 
me personally, I like to use tier 8 for crew training just because I like to earn silver while I'm at it, even though you don't get as much XP earn. So we're going to enter the second game in a moment. This is the very next game um, after this one. And it's going to be on a map I do not like. And I don't know why I don't like this map. I just seem to struggle. I don't know where to go. And that is Fjords. Um, yeah, I don't know. I have just no idea where I should go on this map. You see, I'm top tier again. Uh, which is super lucky. And usually what I do on this map is I just tend to go to the center of the map. Uh, kind of D5-ish. Um, and from the other spawn, I head to the same hill, but obviously not to D5, but around the same hill. I just always tend to do the same thing. I try and hide there to avoid artillery, and to try and uh, fight from the middle and do a bit of spawn. See, the speed of this vehicle, especially going uphill, is kind of painful. High explosive, by the way, for anybody who's wondering. Can be quite nice on this, but this is at tier 8, so it's at the tier C Scorpion G's, SU 130PM's, Waffle E 100's, Ship Barns. But the only reason I don't carry any is because, as I stated earlier, this vehicle doesn't carry the most ammo in the world. So I just don't want to bring any high explosive in case I run out of APCR or heat in those tier 10 games against E 100's and Type 5's. Now, I wasn't expecting that to hit, as I said, this thing's actually horrible, so trying to hit shots on the move is, um, just RNG, really. There's the artillery, I was expecting to hit me, and that's why I always come to this position, because once you get to that rock, he cannot hit you anymore. Obviously, when you poke out to try and shoot people, you can hit him. may get rid of the STG. Now, do need to be a bit careful because there's a bush there that the light tank can use to where he will be unspotted if he pokes out and then he'll be able to get a free shot into us. So we do need to watch out for him. As you can see, there he is. Feel like that's a nice shot in. I don't want to push too far out because the artillery's already shot me once. I'm pretty sure he's still got his eyes on me. I see that the ISM has to stock turret, which is going to make this a lot easier to deal with. Stockade's coming around. I'm repairing straight away, not just because he's got the auto loader, but also because he tracked me in a position where I think artillery could hit me. The light tank shoots Felix again. I say he's in a really irritating position. I see the guys coming to our left. I've tried to back up a little bit. I'm telling Felix about it. Trying to get the guys in the center to uh, move a bit faster. And unfortunately, the time is going to be a bit off here. I'm falling back to the little pond so I can drop down. But as I turn around to fall back, that is when the enemies make their push round the corner that Felix is at. So now I start turning the help obviously quite slow. Dreadnought shoots at. Felix, I do manage to pick up the tracking shot and finish him off. But I've managed to fall back to the position I wanted to be at. Because now, if need be, I can drop down to the water again, which, as I said, because I'm reloading, you've got to be ready to fall back. And that's why I started coming back, because I need to get to where teammates are. And now my teammates can shoot at the enemy. No idea what his plan was there. Um. I'm almost reloaded. Very slow climbing up the hill. Got a track with thermal with the first shot. I reckon he's not worth the final shot because there's not enough hit points. So I shoot the uh, Pershing for 450. And that's the thing, I could have finished him off there, but with the reload this thing has, it's quite painful to use 390 alpha and a 30 second overall reload on like someone on 10 health. Now, I'm actually pretty confident at this point that we are going to win. Um, and I'm also only expecting to get one more clip out this game. Finish off the Pershing. I'm ignoring the Tan Health tier 6. And 
and I'm going to try and use my last two shots on, or what I'm expecting to be my last two shots on a tier 8. I've already tracked with the first shot, so now he's still alive with socks, and he knows I'm reloading. So I'll have a 30 second reload, and all I can do is hope that my teammate behind me can come and help, because the Prima Victoria will have no problem penning straight through the front of me. It's one of my last three APCR shells, as I said, I think they're carry much ammo, and I very rarely find myself firing premium in these top tier games. Teammate does manage to finish them off, and now there's a stockade coming around, so I know I'm dead at this point, but I'm going to try and get some shots off before I do. I know I'm going to fire first for this last shot, and then I die. So that's a bit of the power of the stockade you saw there. As he came around the corner, I just knew I was dead. Because he had too many hit points, so unless I bounce shells, which to be fair is actually quite likely with this thing. Not because it doesn't lack the pan, but because it's actually so bad, that increased the chance of him bouncing. So I'll let this uh, game play out here. It's a stockade, tries to hold his own, but surrounded by vehicles when you're reloading, it wasn't going to end well for him. So last game was over 3k damage, this game's just under 4k damage, both top tier games, to be fair, but... And we'll see the silver make this game. Another 120,000 silver. High caliber, only second class, let's find top tier tanks, but overall, I quite like this tank. It's not OP, it makes good silver, it's just an average vehicle, so well done Wargaming for giving an average vehicle for free. So thank you guys for watching, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you all in the next one.